Add a Part. We can add a part to our inventory list through the Add a Part wizard, as well as set up our system to add a catalog or buyout part entered on a repair order to our inventory automatically. Either way, we create a part record. Let me show you how to add a part through the wizard, and then we'll cover how to set up your system to add those catalog parts or buyout parts as well. From the toolbar, click the Parts Search icon to open the Parts Search window that will list every part we have in the system. We could just start by clicking the Add Part button to start the Add a Part wizard, but in order to make sure we're not entering a duplicate part number, I recommend typing in the part number first to see if it's on the list. Then, when the part number doesn't show up, click the Add Part button to start the wizard and your part number is entered. So let's press the Tab key, and note the Tab key can be used throughout this wizard. Now remember, not all of these entry fields must be filled out in the part record. Only the fields with the red asterisk are required. For this training video, I'm going to review every option available, but you can view the Add a Part Quick Start video for a shortened lesson. So let's enter a description next. Note, when you add a part to an RO from an online parts catalog, a part record is created automatically with these required fields already filled in. For the description, I would choose the format of brake pads, rear. So I can search the description by brakes and find all of the rear brake pads. Now I didn't start the description with rear on purpose, as I could have other parts that are for the rear of the vehicle, like rear shocks. I always start with the component the part is going to be installed on, then the location and you can have up to 100 characters, including spaces. Check the Is a Fluid box to track your fluid sales separately. Fluids will still be tracked as a part along with the rest of your general inventory on your financials if you check this box, but the sales tax report lists fluids separately, and you can run inventory reports and just select to view your fluids. Check the Use German Sorting for Searches and Reports box, to be able to search and list this part using the German sort order, looking up the part by its fourth digit instead of its first. Enter the barcode SKU or stock keeping unit number that is assigned to this part to print on the barcode label for use with barcode scanners and printers, and click Next. The location code, up to eight characters, is used to list where the part is physically located in your shop. Very handy for quickly verifying stock on hand, pulling parts for the job, and doing a physical inventory as you can order your physical inventory worksheets by location. This feature is well worth entering for any stock parts. The condition of the part, new, used, or rebuilt, prints on the estimate and repair order to the right of the part number stating the condition of that part, and most states require by law that the part condition be listed on the repair order. It defaults to new. The product code, set to default to GI for general inventory, is used to track your parts on inventory reports in financial accounting. By assigning a different product code to a part, you can now track that part separately by its product code. Maybe assign a different product code for tires, filters, or batteries, for example. You also have the option to assign each of those product codes its own line on your general ledger to track your inventory, sales, and cost of goods for those parts separately or some shops create different product codes to run inventory reports by product code, but leave the financial part, the general ledger numbers, on the default account number. Click Select, and let's take a look at a few different product codes. Here is a system default, GI for General Inventory, and you can see parts with the GI product code are tracked in the 13,000 account when they're in inventory, their sales are tracked in 40,000, and their costs are tracked in the 50,000 account. These are the main inventory, sales, and cost of goods sold accounts for parts. And frankly, the vast majority of shops just track all their parts in these default accounts. But you have the option to create new product codes, as I mentioned, to run inventory reports by product code. Take a look here. I created a different product code for batteries and filters, but notice these parts are still tracked with the default accounts as the general inventory. See? But take a look at my tires product code. Tires in inventory are 13,100, tires sold are 40,100, and their costs are tracked by account 50,100 on my financials. So I can see what my sales numbers are for tires separately. And these are the buttons to add, edit, or delete your product codes. And check this box to view any deleted product codes you might want to reactivate. Let's close. 
Now the part tire size is just another search criterion we can assign to a part, great for tires and things like nuts and bolts. We can also run inventory reports by size criteria. For stock parts, enter a best quantity, the amount we would have on hand if we were fully stocked, and this number is used to calculate the amount to be ordered on parts reorder reports. The minimum quantity is the level that triggers the reorder report. If we fall below the minimum, this part will be on the reorder report with the number required to get us back to our best quantity for this part. Let's say our best quantity is 4, and our minimum quantity is 2. Once we got down to 1, the reorder report would say we need to order 3 more to get back to our best quantity. Click Next, or we could click the Back button if we wanted to go back and change something. And here we enter pricing. Let's go over these options first. Check the Is Commissionable box to allow the system to include this part in an employee's commission if they're paid on part sales. Check the Is Discountable box to allow discounting of this part from the repair order. If this box is not checked, the discount feature is inactive for this part on the RO. You can, however, still check the Warranty Discount box and discount this part for warranty purposes. Check the Taxable box to calculate sales tax on this part and add it to the repair order when the part is sold. Uncheck for non-taxed items that are sold, like emissions certificates, that kind of thing. Check the Use Price Matrix to apply the Parts Price Matrix calculations to this part. The Parts Price Matrix is set up under the Parts Manager and will apply the pricing method you set in the matrix to this part with this box checked for all the price levels you have assigned, A, B, or all six in the matrix. You can set this box in the Taxable box to be checked by default under the Setup section. Now let's enter the base cost, and the base cost is defined as the last highest price you paid for this part. As you might come across a deal here and there for oil filters, for example, you would still want to enter your typical cost and price your parts accordingly. If you're entering a quantity on hand for this part, the system will take this base cost and multiply it by the quantity you enter as your current stock on hand and post that dollar amount on your general ledger. We'll see that under this Advanced button in a moment. This base cost will adjust higher if you pay more for this part the next time you buy it, resetting the pricing of your part if calculated on cost, if, that is, you have the Reset Base Cost option selected under Inventory Setups. We'll cover that later as well. Also note, the base cost will never adjust downward if you pay less for a part. Downward adjustments need to be done manually. Now the list price is generally the manufacturer's or vendor's retail price. And this is for reference only if you use a profit margin or a cost multiplier pricing method. If you don't have the Use Price Matrix checked and enter the list price, the list price will become your selling price. And the Markup Markdown Pricing method is calculated off the list price, not your cost. Note the little red arrow jumped to the Markup Down position, designating this is the pricing method selected. Remember to use the minus sign if this is a markdown from list. And note, this list price will not change when you restock a part in inventory like the base cost does. We can override and enter an amount under sales price to manually set a selling price for this part. And note the red arrow again moved. This amount entered here will not change unless it's manually changed from within this part's master record. Let's look at using the profit margin method. We could enter in a 50% profit margin and this is calculated off the base price. And again, the arrow moved over. So whenever the base cost changes, like if the price goes up the next time you buy this part, the selling price will reflect that increase with a higher selling price. We could use a cost multiplier method, and this really is just another way at looking at profit margin. It's pretty straightforward. Enter three, and it prices the part three times the base cost. And our red arrow moved yet once more, now there are several ways to set your pricing, and using the parts price matrix is by far the easiest way to do this, at least as a starting point. So if I check this box, it will override anything I've put in here and apply my parts price matrix. Now, if I think to myself, well, I can't quite charge that much money, you at least know what your target is. You can uncheck that box and adjust it as needed. But remember, only profit margin and cost multiplier will increase your selling price according to what you paid for the part. One last note on the red arrow. 
If you check the Use Price Matrix box, the red arrows will simply move to the left side. Since the system doesn't know from here what pricing methods you have selected under the Parts Price Matrix setup. Notice we have an Advanced button here and here. If you did not have a core, you would just have clicked the Advanced button from the previous screen. But let's review cores and then take a look at the Advanced button. Click the box to track cores for this part, and this will activate our entry fields. Enter the core cost charged by the vendor and the amount we would charge the customer for the core if it was not returned to us or was not in good enough shape to be returned to the vendor for credit. The system treats core cost charged by the vendor as new inventory until a core cost is charged to the customer. You won't see account for new core charges in the part record, so just be aware that the quantity of the actual part is always the same quantity of new cores. Not until that part is entered on the repair order and you select the option Core Received and that RO is posted and closed will that core show up as a used core in inventory in the core bank. Core costs, charges from our vendor, are tracked as a part in inventory under its own product code. You can change the product codes for these cores to track the new and used cores separately if you like, but I just keep them grouped under the same product code. Enter the quantity of used cores in stock for this part if you're entering a new system inventory. Entering a quantity here, along with the cost, will increase the amount of our used core inventory dollar amount on the general ledger. If there's not a core associated with this part, just leave the box unchecked and click Advanced to skip the cores section. And here is where you enter your current stock on hand if you're just getting your parts records entered now and are entering your parts inventory. Remember, I mentioned, the system takes your last cost times this amount and puts an entry on your general ledger as an initial setup amount. You can assign a primary vendor that will appear when you create a purchase order to buy this part. Just click Select and choose from the list. If the vendor has a different part number for this part, you can enter it here and it will print out on your purchase orders and also act as a cross-reference number. Enter parts costs from the vendor if you have one and this last amount paid will be saved under Vendor Tracking. If no cost is entered, the last cost will display as a zero amount. Here we can enter a cross-reference number and description, or select a cross-application by clicking the Select button and choosing a part in our inventory. And note, we can only select one cross-reference in the wizard, but we can select as many cross-references as we like after this part record is saved. The popularity code is user-definable, and for example, you can rate your parts A through F or 1 to 5 to designate the most popular through least popular. The brand ID is a field that is populated when a catalog is imported, typically with the manufacturer information, but it's also user definable. Note there's no search or reports capability by pop code or the brand ID. Enter a hazardous materials fee to be added to the invoice when this part is selected. The hazardous materials fee is multiplied by the number of parts sold and appears under subtotals on the invoice. The fee can be designated taxable or non-taxable, and here we can enter a tire disposal fee if applicable, and it too is added to the invoice when the part is selected. This fee also can be taxable or non-taxable, and we have a customizable field to charge an additional amount as a percentage whenever this part is sold. All three of these add-on charges are user-definable under Setups. I just have them set to add a hazardous fee for oil filters and fluids, and I charge a tire disposal fee for each tire sold. Click the Allow Auto Update box to enable any changes in the parts price matrix to be automatically applied to this part. And this is commissionable is a duplicate from earlier. Click Reset Base Cost to allow the base cost of the part to increase if the last cost of the part was higher than the base cost. I mentioned this when we were in the pricing section as this will ensure your part's selling price is calculated based on the last price you paid for that part. Under Setups, we can select to have this automatically checked as well. Click Finish and your part record is saved. One note, after the new part record is created, we can add a manufacturer name, line, and class to that part record if needed. Last, as I mentioned under Setups from the menu bar, Repair Orders and Parts Invoices, we can click on the Inventory Setup and activate to track inventory, add catalog parts to the inventory list, and add buyout parts to the inventory list, 
select to use a price matrix by default for new in catalog parts, for buyout parts, and I always check to allow manager override. And here, reset base parts cost at purchase. Under the defaults link, you can select to default your new parts and buyouts as taxable. And this concludes the lesson on add a part.